What's the best glue for gluing together XPS foam? Well, that question is poorly worded and lacks the appropriate context to correctly answer, but it comes up all the time. So today I'm gonna to try to answer it anyway. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. What is the best glue to glue XPS foam to XPS foam? The, the answer is different depending on context. What are you trying to accomplish? How big are the pieces? How quickly do you need them to dry? Are you cutting little bricks to glue or shingles or something? Or are you putting two big pieces together? Give the context if you want to correctly get the information because there's two different answers here really if you boil it down. If your question is what's the best glue for gluing small little bricks or shingles or that sort of stuff to like a building or something, you have three real contenders. PVA glue, a tacky glue like Eileen's tacky glue that is PVA based or hot glue. All three of those work really well in that application. PVA glue and tacky glue are a lot cleaner to work with. They don't get a lot of wisps. They're gonna hold up better than hot glue over time. PVA glue, tacky glue works really well. I prefer tacky glue over PVA just because it holds better faster and it doesn't shift things around. But if I'm really in a hurry, hot glue is going to work. What's the best glue or adhesive for gluing large chunks of XPS foam to large chunks of XPS foam with the intention of making thicker foam. So say you want to make some big rocks, but where you live, you can't buy thick foam. You need to glue some together. What is the best glue for that? I got 10 contenders that I'm going to test out here. I went out to the store, bought a bunch of stuff that I didn't have. We're going to put them all to the test to see what works the best. There's a few criteria I have going into this that already limited what I was going to test. That glue needs to be paintable when finished. That glue also needs to be able to be easily spread over a flat surface. I don't want any glue that you can only do in lines and it's too difficult to spread because if you're gluing two flat surfaces together and then you're gonna cut them up, you wanna make sure there's full adhesion. For that reason, hot glue is instantly out of the equation and the test because if you wanna glue huge pieces of XPS foam to each other, there's no way you're doing it with hot glue. It's gonna cool too fast. It's not an option, so that one is out. Another testing point, not a criteria, is how quickly it cures or dries. XPS foam is a vapor barrier. So if the glue requires air to dry or evaporate, it's gonna get trapped inside there and take a very long time or maybe will never fully dry. And then when you go to cut it, it's gonna slide around. I'm gonna be testing PVA glue anyway, but I think that one's gonna fail on that account. The last and arguably most important criteria for this, can you still cut the material with a hot wire after there's glue on it. If the adhesive dries in such a way that the hot wire can't cut it later, it's gonna fail the test. I've cut a whole bunch of three inch squares to test these on. I'm gonna put each adhesive on these squares, put them together, put some weight on it, leave them for 24 hours, and come back and see if they cut on the hot wire table, and if after cutting, they're still fully bonded or if it's just wet glue that slides around. If anything fails within 24 hours, it's a failure to me. I don't care if something works after three days of drying. For me, that's a non, like a non-contender. I, I don't wanna wait that long and neither should you. So 24 hour test, the glues. I got 10 of them here. We're gonna be testing Elmer's glue all, your basic PVA glue that every crafter has on hand. Eileen's tacky glue, which is just a thicker based PVA. Carpenter's glue, which is similar to PVA, but it's actually a resin based glue and it's a lot stronger than PVA. So we're gonna see how that holds up. Styro goo from Hot Wire Foam Factory. Now this is intentionally designed for foam, so it should work. We'll see. PL Premium, which uh, I'm hoping works really well because this stuff grabs and holds really fast. I don't know if the Hot Wire will cut it after, no More Nails, which is a similar product to PL Premium. It's another construction adhesive. It'll be interesting to see how they compare to each other. Gorilla Construction Adhesive. Gorilla Glue is a brand name. They make all sorts of different glues. From what I can tell, this is their 
product to compete with PL and No More Nails. So I think these three are gonna be very similar. Great stuff, expanding foam. I have high hopes for this. I think if it works, it's gonna be awesome. It might be a little messy and annoying to do, but the idea here is if you use this to adhere two pieces of foam together, it's adhering it essentially with more foam. So it should pass the hot wire test after very well. Super 77, my favorite spray adhesive. This stuff is very strong and smelly. I don't know if it's gonna melt the foam. I have a feeling that if I spray it from a distance, it'll be fine. And last, I'm gonna try some contact cement. I don't know if this will melt foam because I've never used it on foam. So we're gonna find out. Got a whole bunch of popsicle sticks to spread them. Let's start testing. First up, your standard Elmer's glue all. This one is definitely gonna do well on the spreadability test. Don't think it's gonna get much better than that. My concern with Elmer's is the drying. Tacky glue. Carpenter's glue. The trouble here is likely going to be drying again. Now we got the Hot Wire Foam Factory Styro Goo. Again, this one is apparently designed exactly for this purpose, so should perform well. Spreadability is a little bit more difficult than PVA, probably about similar to the Tacky Glue. Now we got the PL Premium. Spreadability is actually pretty good. Now, no more nails, and I'm curious to see how this is going to differ to the PL Premium. Pretty difficult to get out of this tube here, although if I had bought it in a caulking tube, it probably would have been similar to the PL. Consistency of this is very similar to an acrylic latex caulking like Alex Plus. Doesn't feel as sticky as PL. I feel like the grabability is going to be less here. Now we got Gorilla Glue's take on the construction adhesive. Is this going to be more like the No More Nails or more like the PL? It actually seems to be somewhere right in the middle in terms of color, tackiness, and spreadability. Now the expanding foam. This is the one I'm really curious about. I have a feeling in a lot of ways it'll be the best, but also the most annoying to work with. Definitely not the easiest to spread, although I wonder if you need to. Super 77. Doesn't seem to be melting the foam, at least not quickly. That one wins so far in terms of speed bond like this is already very sticky and lastly the real dark horse of this race here the contact cement i don't know if this is going to melt foam or not this one i'm going to have to treat a little bit differently because with contact cement the way it works is you put it on both surfaces and you let it dry or tack up for 15 minutes till it's not sticky to the touch and then you put the two pieces together and they stick. This will give us time to see if the foam melts, which it's bubbling a lot, so it is reacting. Well, 15 minutes later, and I think it's pretty clear that contact cement is not safe on foam. Definitely melted. I'm gonna stick it together anyway and see how it cuts after. It's too bad, because man, that is an instant bond. Got weights on all of these, thanks to Baba's Preserves. I'm gonna let these all sit for 24 hours and then I'm gonna take them to the hot wire cutter and see how they fare in test number two. Okay, coming back to this a few minutes later and even with the weight on top, the expanding foam started to shift the foam apart. So the weight's not gonna work, but I want this one to have a chance. So I'm actually just gonna clamp this together and see if it fares better that way. We'll see how that does. 24 hours later, and it's time to really put these glues to the test. Let's see if they can be cut on the hot wire once dry, because if they can't, then they're a failure. Let's see. All right, starting here with the Elmer's glue. Had a little trouble starting there, but it does seem to be cutting through the dried glue, no problem. Although maybe that means that the inside is still not dry but it is not glued. See that? Failure. Now we got the Eileen's Tacky Glue, which may be similar. Broken wire. 
Back in action. Uh, it's more dry than the PVA. You know what? Oh, no, it is still totally wet. Although because it's the tacky glue, it holds it a little bit better. So that's still pretty much a fail. Carpenter's glue. Let's see if this is the same or if the resin additives in the carpenter's glue make it work a bit better. Cuts no problem. Oh, not even absolutely terrible. This is worse. This is way worse than even the plain Elmer's glue. Hot wire foam factory styro goo. This is the one that is designed for this, so it sure better work. It smells bad cutting it. Come on, come on. Failure. That is a failure. All right, PL construction adhesive. It cuts, but not easily. Here's the real test though. Come on, don't fail me. Oh. Okay, this one is... I was able to pull it apart with a lot of force, but the glue is completely dried. It's interesting how it didn't quite bond. You can actually take it away in a layer. It required a lot of force to come apart. So I'm gonna consider that essentially a success. It's not perfect, but it's workable. No more nails. Cuts no problem. Cuts easier than the PL actually. Uh, hmm. Still not dry, but it was holding a bit better than the PVA. So that's kind of like a partial fail. Gorilla glue. Ooh, that's hopeful. Ooh. Wow. I can't get this one apart. So far, absolute best. Great stuff, expanding foam. As you can see, the foam kind of seeped out of everything, but it stayed together if since it was clamped. It's cutting, no problem. Although actually there's a bit of resistance there, more than just the XPS, but cutting through without issue. Oh yeah, that's not coming apart. Not coming apart at all. Totally bonded success. Super 77, cutting without issue. And I can pull it apart a little bit, but that is strongly bonded, another success. Now this was the contact cement and there's not really much point testing this because it melted the foam so much that I think this was a failure from the beginning, but I'm curious to see the results here anyway. Oh, well. Even with the melting and everything, that, wow. This is the biggest failure of them all. I gotta say, I am pretty surprised by some of these results here. I really expected the PL and the No More Nails to perform better, and I was really expecting the Gorilla Glue and those other two to kind of all perform the same, but they didn't. The PL and the No More Nails, I would consider a failure, but the Gorilla Glue totally worked. The PVA-based glues, I wasn't surprised that they failed. I was a little surprised that the carpenter glue was actually the worst of the bunch, but I was expecting those ones to fail. The Super 77 was really the one that surprised me because it was an absolute success and it didn't melt the foam. I'm kind of blown away by this one here. I've used it for many things in the past, but didn't think it would be so good in this application. So what is my final verdict? I think there's three options here, each with pros and cons. The Gorilla Glue was easy to use, easy to apply, didn't really smell bad, and it cut really well. I think it probably takes the longest to dry out of the bunch, but that's okay because it still holds it really, really strongly. The Great Stuff Expanding Foam, this may be the strongest of all the bonds and it creates an adhesive layer that is essentially just more foam. The downside to it is that it's pretty messy to work with. You can sometimes ruin a bottle if you don't use all of it. It's hard to reuse it later and it really needs to be clamped together to make sure it doesn't expand and shift. That being said, if you have a lot of pieces to do or big areas and you're gonna use up a whole can, this would be a great option. You just need to make sure you clamp it down. There is another version of this foam. It's the blue can. It's meant for doors and windows and that stuff doesn't expand as much. It's intentionally designed so you can put it in door and window jams without it causing the frames to bend as it expands. So that one might actually work a little bit better than this one. But the reason I chose this one 
is that this one is useful in other crafting applications. You can actually just spray out big mounds of this and make hills and cut it up because it dries hard. Whereas the door and window stuff is always very soft and squishy and you'll have more limited use out of it. And the Super 77, man, if you need to glue two pieces of foam together and then immediately keep working on them without any waiting for dry time, this is your guy. This glue killed it. I, I can't believe it, it's, it's awesome. The downside to it, that this stuff smells awful. It's not something you wanna be using indoors all the time, so you wanna do it outside, which could be a big inconvenience. But if you have ventilation or you know you live somewhere where you're not worried about it being winter all the time, this is awesome, especially if you're in a hurry. These are the best three glues for gluing big pieces of foam together, or at least the best out of the 10 I tested. There's more on the market. Check it out. I will put links in the video description to these three products. Hopefully they're all available on Amazon. I didn't check yet. I'll put links to them if you want to pick some up for yourself, but I believe these are going to be all pretty easy to find at your local hardware store, big box store. But if you want to buy some through those affiliate links, it really helps the channel out and helps fund videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video, you found it useful, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section below. If you have another glue that you know is fantastic that I didn't test here, let me know because I would love to hear about it. And if I get enough of them, I might do another round of testing. If you really enjoy these videos and you wanna help me keep making them every week, the best way you can do that is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. It's through the support of the people there that I'm able to dedicate all this time and effort into doing these videos, buying a bunch of glue just to test them. It really goes a long way. But maybe you don't wanna sign up for something like that and you just wanna help me out once and get something for yourself. Well, did you know I got lots of t-shirts and hoodies and cool merch available? It's always available via Teespring on my website. There's a merchandise tab, you can click on it, you can grab something, help me out in the process. I'll put a link in the pinned comment below to make it easier to find, just in case you don't feel like navigating the website. That's it for this week, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this and hope that it helps you. Cheers. See you again next week.